Hello, welcome to our weekly devotions. I'm Pastor David Schub at Trinity Lutheran Church in West Bend, Wisconsin. We continue to focus a little bit on our place in creation. And today we read from the 12th chapter of Luke's Gospel. Then Jesus told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, what should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I'll do this. I'll pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for, for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, you fool. This very night your life is being demanded of you. And the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more... Value are you than the birds? And can any of you, by worrying about, add a single hour to your span of life? If then you are not able to do so small a thing as that, why do you worry about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will God clothe you, you of little faith? And do not worry, weep, or do not keep striving for what you are to eat and what you are to drink, and do not keep worrying. For it is the na- nations of the world that strive after all these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, strive for God's kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Do we, as the people of God, really, really believe in the abundance of God? One of the greatest struggles of God's people here in America is for us to decide whether we live as if God is a God of abundance or God is a God of scarcity. When we lived in Kansas, as you drove down the road, you could see the fields and fields of grain. There was something awesome about seeing this abundance of God before you. And yet I constantly struggle with how we as people have turned that abundance into scarcity. To increase the price of some commodities, we uh, destroy amounts of it so that it will artificially increase the price. Or we don't plant so much so the price will be increased. We put a premium on grain grown to feed cattle rather than to feed people. That could feed a starving world. Bread for the World says if we altered how we grew crops, we could feed everybody in the world. God offers abundantly, and yet we store like the man in the story so that we can take our ease, so we can not worry about it. And yet that abundance could have been used to help the poor around that man. In the thinking of Jesus, that was the problem. To store up so much that you had to build extra barns means that you're not sharing with the people who don't have anything. How will we live our lives? Counting on the abundance of God and the creation and sustaining of the world around us or living in constant fear of scarcity? It's hard. I know, I waffle back and forth between the two all the time. But this week I was looking back on some notes I have on something that the Reverend Susan Briel um, said at one of our Sydney assemblies. She told a series of stories about um, children who were in the class of one of her friends who was a teacher, and she had given them the assignment to create little fold-out books where, you know, you'd get different things as the book folded out into new sorts of things, kind of like those pop-up books we had as kids. One little boy did a book called The Man with Expanding Arms. 
As you fold the book out, the arms of the man in the story reached wider and wider, trying to grab and embrace more and more and more balls and toys and boats and planes and all the things that the little boy could imagine, reaching and reaching and reaching until, boing, the arms popped off. Another was done by a little girl and was the story of the expanding table. The story starts with a table filled with food, and as you fold it out, there are more and more places at the table, and more and more food, and there are people in all kinds of clothes. She saw all kinds of different ethnic clothes, and there were places all around the table for all the people in the world. That's how she saw the reality before. A third was done by a little girl. This little girl had been raised by her grandmother and grandfather because her father had died and her mother was a meth addict and could no longer care for her. The book was, was the story of her grandmother's expanding lap. As you fold the book out, her grandmother's lap expanded, holding a garden, children, and all the things precious to this little girl. And the last thing is her mother. Strung out on meth, not even being able to care for or about this child, and yet was held in grandma's love. I think this last is the picture of the love of God which holds us and all creation in love. In fact, the creation is an expression of the amazing love of God where there is always enough room and there's always enough for all. The question is, in our life, will we let enough be enough? Will we live with a vision of the abundance of creation, or will we live in fear of scarcity, which really is a form of doubt about the love of God? It's a struggle. And yet, I invite you to look at the wonder of the world all around and believe and trust in the abundance of God. Let us pray a prayer that was written by Fiona Murdoch in an, for an Irish congregation. Let us pray. God of the universe, we thank you for your many good gifts, for the beauty of creation it's, and its rich and varied fruits, for clean water and fresh air, for food and shelter, animals and plants. Forgive us for the times we have taken the earth's resources for granted and waste what you have given us. Transform our hearts and minds so that we would learn to care and share, to touch the earth with gentleness and with love, respecting all living things. We pray for all those who suffer as a result of our waste, greed, and indifference. And we pray that the day would come when everyone has enough food and clean water. Help us to respect the rights of all people and all species and help us to willingly share your gifts today and always. Amen. Abundance or scarcity? It's a choice we all have day by day. Have a good week.